Hello and welcome to Train Symbiotic and today I want to talk about for the control buses on your DCC system as this is something which can cause confusion, headache and can cost you money if you go and get it wrong. So what I'll do is I'll start the title and then I'll talk through you all the information I know. So let's start for titles. In my hands, I have two controllers. This is a Digitrex, this is a Rutco. If you just uh, if you're new into the hobby, you would think, oh, maybe I can use these with different systems. No, you can't. Although they both have a six-pin socket at the bottom, never ever do this when it's running. And you can plug it in. That would be guaranteed to destroy both systems if you had any power running on them. The problem is, there's four communication standards between your controller and your DCC system. The one I have the most experience with is Loconet. Loconet is used with Digitrex. It's a Digitrex a protocol. It's also used with Unibrook and it's used on the old Fleischmann Twin Centre. So, this system allow you to control points, get uh, feedback, uh, boosters, all through this 8 core wire. I have always found the LocNet system to be really reliable. Uh, I used it on quite a major setup originally but now but even now I'm still using it with my ECOS. The ECOS have its own bus system it's for uh, ESU link but that also has several other buses we have a S88 which you can use for feedback into the uh, ECOS. Plus, there's a module called a LNet, LNet adapter, which allow you to connect your LocNet systems to your um, ECOS. One thing to be aware of with the LNet adapter is it doesn't run for full LocNet protocol. As on for bus you have the digital system um, bus and the Loconet bus. The ESU does not use, send out the digital system bus it just send out the LNet bus. But for Digitrax on the uh, bus system you can connect in block detections and the nice thing with the ESU block detections is you can address them, name them and they have railcom. You plug it in and it's all easy to program from for a touch screen. You also have the boosters which I haven't actually tried but in theory again it's plugged in, plug and play. So uh, that's the main bus on the ECOS. But one of the things ECOS have done to get around the bus problem is they have a sniffer port, which means if you have something like the um, ExpressNet uh, controller, you plug that into the controller, then you plug the controller's DCC output into the sniffer port on the uh, e ESU for ECOS. Then it means whatever you do on here, 
will turn up on the ECOS. It does take a little bit of configuring, but it's quite a nice system, nice option to use. So the next system is the ExpressNet. This is a Rockco Remote Team mouse. This use for ExpressNet. The main system to use ExpressNet is Lens. There's two different socket formation on ExpressNet. You have this sort, and then you have a DIN socket. But with the correct adapter cable, this ju is just plug and play with Lens. Uh, again, with the ExpressNet system, you can get a computer interface. You can also get a computer interface for the local net system. This then allow you to control the system from things such as a JMRI, which is a modern railway control software, or a control it with a train controlling software. Uh, one of the nice items Uniblock make is a adapter. So you plug this into the adapter, which then transfer the signal from ExpressNet to LocalNet. That's something I want to get one day in the future. So these are the buses I have had first hand experience with. Net, uh, next one is the CAM bus. This is used by Zimbo. And if you have the new uh, Rockco Z21, which isn't new that any longer, but it is a major system, uh, that also have it. Cam bus is used by Zimbo, and also Cam bus is designed for use in for automotive sister industry. Uh, for another group which have a large use of Cam bus is the Mega Group, which is model model railway electronic group. And they um, come up with little units which you can build yourself. But uh, something which uh, the National, National Model Railway Association, which is an American organisation which set up the DCC protocol, they have set up another protocol called LCC, which stands for Layout Control. Uh, system layout command control this is a system which is starting to be standardized for controlling many things it's mainly being used in Amer in America but this is something which is good at allowing you to have a a system just controlling all your accessory bits but many but a few manufacturers are coming out with different ways of getting around for incompatibility between the multiple systems the two major systems people use is LocalNet and ExpressNet and for uh, Rockco Z21 this is capital Z. That if I have a capital Z, which is a black unit, then a small Z, which is white unit, which don't have as many functions. But for Z21, this have multiple protocols on it. So you have your express net, so you can just plug this straight into the front. Then it have a local net adapter. It then have its own uh, R bus adapter, and then there's the CAM bus. So that's one system which have multiple protocols. Another system is a DigiRail system. So for people who make these, they have a multi protocol system, which have uh, it have LAN. It have WAN, which is wireless area network. It have local net, and it have ExpressNet. 
So that system is designed to have multiple different systems talking to it. Uh, the final system is NEC. I don't know what they call their connection system. I believe that that's a version of a cam net, but I'm not 100% sure. Their system have been adapted by DCC Concept, which allow you to connect their, um, their accessories to it. They have uh, one which allow you to throw switches by just pressing for buttons and they have used a NEC system. So those are the potential problems with uh, your new DCC system. The DCC system have the compliance from the output of a controller. Anything up to the output of a controller is down to your manufacturer to decide on how they're going to run it. So this is why you have multiple system. Loconet was originally an American system, Expressnet was originally a European system. So that's the video for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. Um, Monday, we're going to have an interesting video. Again, it's going to be a university blog, but this time it's going to be looking at the history of modern railways. It's going to be a short, a bridge uh, thing, but I've been asked to do research on modern railways. And as I like them so much, I thought, yeah, that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is give you a short history into modern railways. Uh, so join me on Monday at 7 for that or Wednesday for my live stream, which is at 8 o'clock. So thank you everybody for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much. Richard.